the meeting of council open. I advise that the special meeting will be streamed live to the City of Adelaide's website and the recording will also be published to the internet. Please note that this audio and visual recording means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the City of Adelaide, including outside of Australia. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and we pay respect to their elders past and present. We acknowledge and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge that they are of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. And we also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present with us. I have no uh, apologies and leaves of absence uh, other than the Lord Mayor, um, who's obviously not here. And I think we are almost full combo. We are. Uh, reports of Council, uh, receipt of the 2020 21 Business Plan and Budget Public Consultation. And I'll seek a move and a seconder for that. Moved by Councillor Ho, seconded by Councillor Noel. Councillor Ho, did you wish to speak? No. Councillor Noel, members, receive your hand. Rob. Thanks, um, Deputy Lord Mayor. I wish to make an amendment. Um, and that is an addition of uh, a point three that says that requests administrations before the 11th of August 2020 convene a people's panel comprising of representatives from resident, comma, oh, business, of representatives from Resident, comma, business and environment groups to provide additional feedback on the budget in particular on Council's response to the climate crisis and the coronavirus pandemic. That's it. I'll seek a second. Second by Councillor Martin. Uh, Thanks um, very much, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, the reason for putting this forward is, oh, firstly, I do want to express my appreciation for the work that's been done by administration in terms of the consultation um, thus far, and in particular the online um, consultation. I know there's been a large a uh, number of respondents this year relative to others, and I think that's really good. And I do also apologise for not having an opportunity to talk to administration about this today. I was running around from um, meeting uh, to meeting. But um, I guess one of the things that concerns me is whilst there has been a, a strong online um, feedback, that the face-to-face -face or uh, feedback provided through a formal meeting, I think, has been um, not uh, substantial. I recognise obviously there are issues with the pandemic and so on. I, I attended a Zoom meeting last week. I think there were only two members of the community that dialled in, both of whom actually had questions um, and didn't have any sort of direct feedback. Um, and I think it would be remiss of us not to go out a little bit more broadly and try and um, get feedback from expertise uh, external to council. I have mentioned um, representatives from resident business and environment groups, thinking of organisations like, of course, Business SA, Bicycle SA, a range of others um, that may have views on the work that um, Council is doing. And um, I wouldn't have thought it would be too difficult to uh, in such a meeting, either in person or online if necessary, um, and to provide us with that feedback for consideration um, on the 11th of August. So that's behind this uh, amendment. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Um, governance, could we get an apostle after peoples? Splendid. Councillor Martin. Um, thank you. Um, look, uh, this should be uh, supported, I think, because I, I'm not happy with this consultation and I know people get a bit touchy about this, uh, believing that it's a criticism of the administration. It's not. 
But I think we do need to recognise where things aren't working and say that they're not working. Now, it, sure, thousands of people uh, may have looked at our website, but the simple fact is we were persuasive enough for just 78 ratepayers to complete surveys that they were emailed, eight ratepayers to make written submissions, and 31 gave feedback on your say. So, um, um, with a rate base of 16,000, putting aside your say, because we don't know whether they're ratepayers, they could have come from China or Bulamacanker or wherever, but putting those aside, this represents 0.05% of the ratepayer base. It is statistically insignificant. That is insignificant with a capital I. Um, uh, none of the emails have been made available to me, by the way, so I, I, uh, I don't know what they look like. But some of the uh, uh, submissions point to a really uh, big problem in terms of the, uh, the difficulties people have. And these are summarized for us here, um, uh, filtered, and yet they still show that, and I quote from uh, the list, from page 20, quote, couldn't make sense, along with, quote, this plan is poorly presented, couldn't make sense of it. Page 27, what a poorly defined survey. The plan provided a 42-page PDF. Your questions asked us to reference 51 pages, close quotes. Page 30, quote, found this survey difficult to complete. And then when you go to page 50 with a written submission, there's a detailed response where um, uh, somebody says, when reading the PID, we also looked at why question two and three should not be combined. Question two asked which of the 10 service categories in the list were most important, yet the same list was provided in question three for which people were asked to select the least important. Why weren't they combined? Same with questions four and five, six and seven, eight, nine, and 10. So there were real concerns about the way this was done. I must say, though, it was particularly accurate, I, I thought, and I thank the administration for including the observation at page 30, where it says Team Adelaide has been a disaster. Um, I thought that was very accurate. Sorry, Councillor, where does it say that? I'm just asking you to clarify. In there. It, where, it says, if you could read from the papers. Pages 23 and 30. Yep, and, and what does it say again, Councillor? Team Adelaide has been a disaster. Dot, 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 dot. And so you're standing by those words in quotations? Those words in quotations, yes. You are, because it, it yeah. says that in there. Yeah, it says, okay. Team Adelaide has been a disaster, dot, dot, dot. No, you may continue. Oh, oh we'll give you an extra. It's qualified by, by active transport. Uh, but as I said, dot, 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 dot. Team Adelaide has been a we'll disaster. We'll give you an extra second, Hassel. Thank you very much. That's quite unusual. Um, so, um, look, this is a, uh, in my view, uh, a survey on which we cannot rely. Um, if we are serious about consultation, and I know that many members of Team Adelaide are not serious about consultation, preferring instead to tell people what we want them to think or do. But if we are pretending at least to want to know what people then we ought to proceed with something like this that would allow people the opportunity to hear from people's mouths what they actually think, and in an uncomplicated fashion, um, that is not open to criticism. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Kira. Thanks, Chair. Um, I urge councillors not to vote for this amendment, um, notwithstanding that uh, the amendment uh, is loaded in a couple of ways. One, it says a people's panel. Uh, it doesn't say an extended consultation. It says a people's panel, uh, which is something that has to be constituted and properly constituted. Um, putting that to one side, you've got the other loaded uh, about the climate crisis and um, about coronavirus. Um, so notwithstanding those two uh, quite plainly loaded issues, which I think render the amendment um, foul of what we should be uh, approving as a sensible council, the whole issue uh, here is one of whether or not we're compromising our local government democracy. Um, when you have uh, these things, and there's a continual you know, there is, uh, it comes from the same quarter uh, of the council as it comes from the same quarter in politics in general. Uh, it's that quarter of politics that uh, fails to win a mandate at the ballot box. And what they seek to do uh, is undermine and control democracy in other ways. Uh, that is the outcome of this.
this. We know that what will happen is that you'll get a group of unrepresentative activists coordinated from those same quarters who will take over this, this panel. I, I think there's nothing actually controversial about that from, from those quarters in politics. I think that's actually known, understood. It's not even in dispute, you know, if you speak uh, probably with, with some uh, politicians in prime. Um, but that is something worth uh, reflecting on. It's worth repeating and it's worth reminding ourselves of at every juncture because uh, these people are relentless in their aim to undermine democracy. And here's just another example of it. So councillors, uh, there were thousands, there were thousands of, uh, there, were, there were thousands of, you'll get your chance to rebut this, Anne. You'll, you'll, have, you'll have all of your time. All idiot. marks will be directed idiot. through idiot. the chair. Idiot. Councillor Kira, Councillor Moran. Say that fondly. Please, Councillor Kira, Councillor She says Moran. it fondly, and a, a fondly. Um, you, we, we, Councillor Moran, please uh, let him I'm speak. I, I, I hope you can elucidate that comment when you get your chance, as democracy allows you to do that. Councillors, you will both address your remarks through the chair, or I will take so the floor. So, in continuing, if I'm allowed to, by the member of North Adelaide, in continuing, you will also um, refer to members of the correct title. <laughs> um, in continuing and in concluding. Uh, this is this stuff is relentless. It's not really controversial uh, in in what it aims to do, but we must be reminded uh, at every juncture there were thousands of people uh, who uh, essentially voted and spoke on this issue at the election. And the fact that there are very few who have chosen to speak at this juncture may mean to us maybe a reminder that we're delegated to deal with this, and there are a lot of people who want us to just get on with it. Thank you, Councillor Kira. Councillor Kuros. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have a few questions. So I'm, I'm a little bit confused in regards to a people's panel. What are we talking about? Are we talking, how would you orchestrate something like this? So can I have a further understanding of it? And would it be something that you're going to do on Zoom? Would it be something that you're going to call on precinct groups? Um, how would this amendment be um, addressed? Uh, through the chair, as Councillor Sims indicated, he hasn't discussed this in advance. Right. Um, my um, understanding of the People's Panel, I'll be looking to convene a representative sample of our um, core city user and ratepayer base to truly reflect a uh, broad cross-section of people um, and then direct contact to the resident business and the groups outlined by Councillor Sims as ASAP, because the 11th isn't too far away, yeah. um, and definitely via Zoom. I think that's the easiest way to conduct and convene something along these lines. Okay, the, the other thing is that it's got a um, response to climate crisis and the coronavirus, which, okay, but what about other groups like disability groups, indigenous groups, migrant community? I mean, how would you address those communities in that uh, amendment that uh, Councillor Sim Happy to incorporate that if you're yeah. well, How broad are we going to take this? I mean, how, I mean, that won't, won't be enough time for the 11th. I'm just asking administration because there, I don't think that that will be enough time by the 11th of August to uh, add all of those groups as well. So I'm asking administration, unless administration now, Martin. Through the chair, Sorry. Councillor Kouros. I'm asking administration. The deputy CEO will answer the question. <laughs> um, thank you, Chair. So if you wish to expand on that group, obviously uh, logistics and organisation and getting in touch with groups will take as long as it takes if you wish to expand on that. As it currently stands, I wouldn't necessarily be contacting uh, you know, a broad range of additional stakeholders other than the ones we've already um, outlined in recommendation three. three. Any further questions, Councillor Cruz? Um, have oh, not. Thank you. Members, not yet. Members, Councillor Knoll. Um, just a couple of questions. First, um, now, I mean, obviously. We're now in the, in the Sorry, the councillor, people are having a conversation in the chamber. <coughs> you may continue. Um, and obviously, uh, our, our entire our budget process has now been thrown out of out of whack. Um, we've been working through, and, and obviously, the administration worked through feverishly trying to get together a budget. Um, now, uh, how critical, first of all, is the time frame to enact this? Because obviously, we want to talk about this in the next council meeting. Uh, Will this consultation be of any value considering 
we, you know, how, how critical is this uh, to get this through so that we can uh, enact whatever the budget uh, has in it? Um, so whether it's of value, I think, is a um, subjective um, call. Well, how can it influence, put it that way? How can, how can it, you know, we are this, we go down the track, two weeks' time, we've got, uh, uh, you know, the budget to do um, or to pass. Um, so is that date critical? Obviously, because if you want to do more consultation and, to, and if it's going to influence anything and be of value, it, it's going to have to be able to be incorporated in some fashion. Um, the, the August dates, um, as we explained to you towards the end of May, are quite important to us because we have timed um, this budget now to make sure that we meet the statutory requirement to have a budget endorsed by the end of August, rather than take the um, previous local, minister, local government minister up on the option to go through to November. Um, so we would need to make sure um, that uh, we were able to convene um, and uh, deliver on that recommendation um, and, you know, by the 11th of August to enable us to meet the timeframes that we set out. Okay. And how does this a consultation, um, you know, how does it measure up as against previous consultations? How, how um, you know, is, is it a response, a level of response? Is it similar, worse? Better. Um, it's better than previous um, years. Um, so um, invariably, um, we get volumes of input into a draft business plan budget consultation when there is a decision by the council to um, maybe um, deliver a project or remove a project that is of huge community value. Um, or community has attachment to it. So if there is a decision like that made, um, usually in April, May time, we find that um, the community responds. Um, engaging on, um, um, you know, annual business plans and budgets is a true requirement. We have found it pretty challenging in the past. Um, people have fed back to us that um, they may well offer up ideas um, and suggestions and I guess it's when those ideas and suggestions aren't necessarily um, then embedded within a final budget um, that the community finds it you know quite sort of challenging to continue to um, provide the input um, and we find that throughout the year the community um, you know, can raise suggestions with council members and that's why we see many motions coming through. We have quarterly budget variations as well, so there's many touch points throughout the year for the community to actually have their ideas heard and enacted. Thank you for that. I mean, I suppose following on from that, look, I mean, I appreciate that we would want to give as full some uh, you know, opportunity for people to uh, be involved as possible, but if you think about this, we have COVID, you got it in there. And this single uh, 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 you know, virus and, and catastrophe is something we now have to work with and we need to do this quickly. And I mean, I can appreciate it, but we are still all here. People can still talk to us. We can put motions forward and there's been enough of them in this, in this, uh, so far during this term for us to uh, influence things. But you're not going to get, as far as I can see, any genuine um, uh, you know, assistance or, or, or alter alteration to our budget because we are trying to first fight a pandemic. Sorry. <laughs> um, you know, and this requires us to act now. I mean, and, and we're, we're here to save the administration and as many businesses as we can with, the, with, the, with our, uh, you know, our actions and, and uh, you know, the various to assist business. And it needs to happen now. And I think it would, as nice as it is, I think we should consider what are the issues they have, and, and obviously the, the, the council seems to be in a good, perfect position to take on as many of these sorts of issues as possible. Bring them to the chamber, make them motions, give us the opportunity to work our way through them. Hang on, well, this is what you're only going to get. So, uh, you know, simply that we allow the administration to go and do their job and try to save uh, everything they can and let's deal with that, then let us deal with in a measured way and really when we are able to understand our finances and that better and, and see whatever light is at whatever tunnel that we can uh, then say, okay, these are the sorts of initiatives people are really feeling strong about. I've read, I've read through it and there's so much about what we are doing and, and parklands and all these sort of things, but they're not going to save us and they're not going to enable this, this city to be a centerpiece of the state if we do not get the business components right, which needs they need our guidance now and our assistance now, 
and these other things are outcomes of us running our organization well and having surpluses that we can invest in in our city uh, uh, in our, our infrastructure and that only comes after we've made a good business case to, uh, for our, our rate payers which are 80 percent business so i for that reason i just can't and you know, I, I don't see i see this as a distraction get on with it talk to us about things and i think we can certainly incorporate it in the future Thank you, Councillor Knowles. Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. I'll make it quick. Um, I think what uh, this is trying to do is consult on the consultation. So then, where do we draw the line? Do we need to consult on the consultation that's taken place on the consultation? In, in saying all of that, um, I think Councillor Sims has touched on a, uh, um, on a bigger issue here, and that is poor community engagement. And personally, I think that the people are politically fatigued, if that's a term. Um, not wanting to uh, get into too much detail, if uh, we are going to go with a panel, then can I suggest that that panel uh, represents the, the ratepayers um, um, uh, in, 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 in proportion. And, and what I mean by that is that if 80% of our rates come from businesses and 20% come from residents, then that panel should be made up of 80% from the business sector and 20% from the residential sector. Thank you, Councillor Abraham Zadeh. Councillor Martin, is that a question? It is a question. Actually, a couple of questions. Um, is, and I'm uh, asking as a consequence of earlier questioning that uh, um, implied that there's a difficulty in hearing consultation and then taking it in our stride in terms of the budget process. Can I have from the administration an understanding of what difficulties there would be if somebody came forward with a really important proposal as a result of a people's panel? What difficulty is there incorporating it in our business plan? CEO or Deputy CEO? I don't think there is. It would be a council decision to incorporate that in the business plan. I don't see it as an issue. Thank you. That's very straightforward. Thank you. And furthering to that, just for elucidation, Deputy CEO, um, what difficulty is there after the business plan is finalised in incorporating suggestions from the community? Um, well, that's why you do quarterly budget reconsiderations so that you continually um, either um, introduce uh, new funding or stop funding or move funding or reprioritise at that point in time. So, and what was um, the total funding commitment for uh, motions on notice brought after the previous business plan? Oh, I need to take that on notice. I think it was around $5 million. Yeah, there was. Um, I think we shared that in one of our budget briefings. Alex, can you remember? Was it? Oh, <laughs> Alex. <laughs> I, think it was, I think it was $5 million. Sorry, Alex, yeah, the, the, total, the total funding um, cost added to our uh, expenditure as a result of motions on notice brought after the business plan was finalised for the previous financial year. Understood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll take that on once. Uh, I had Councillor Mackey's hand next. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, just a first question for clarification. In moving the motion with the additional clause, is Councillor Sims um, moving the whole motion? Oh, this is it. Therefore, discussing the, the, the whole recommendation. Oh, at, at the moment, at the moment, we're just discussing the amendment that will then be, okay. be then voted then on becomes, one way or the other, and then becomes the standard that, that we. Thank you. If I might, um, through you, Chair, speak briefly to Please. the motion. I absolutely understand um, Councillor Sims' motivation uh, with this. I, I think for a large part of that forum that was only attended by two members of the public, the Zoom forum, uh, Councillors Kuros, Sims and I sat together uh, watching uh, and listening to it on, on Zoom. And it, it was quite disappointing that so there was so little engagement with it, notwithstanding that we've had a number of, of um, uh, online survey responses, which which is encouraging. Um, I wonder if I might test um, through you, Chair, um, whether the mover of the additional uh, uh, clause would, would be prepared to consider replacing the term people with a forum 
yeah. 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 So I understand and yeah. accept that people's panel have been a little bit loaded uh, for people have been by deliberately is, by is, democracy for is that a variation the, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. is that yes councillor martin do you have replacement of people's panel with forum yeah thank oh, you councillor martin um, if, if i might uh, just go back to a chair um I think what what council sends, and I'm not going to try to put words in your mouth, councillor, but um, uh, it is wanting to do is make sure that a number of these organisations that represent peak interests, uh, a state of stakeholders in the city, uh, are absolutely aware that this is their last chance to uh, inform the shaping of this year's uh, uh, budget, and given the circumstances. Um, and, and I might add, uh, look, on the one hand, on the positive side, one could say, OK, given the, the decisions that we have foreshadowed in the, in the steps toward the budget, i.e. that the rate in the dollar is not going to change, that our parking fees and charges are, are not going to change, that these are areas that might well have satisfied a number of, of our stakeholders to the point where they, they then disengaged from the, the budget more fully. Um, not everybody is as obsessed about these things as I absolutely appreciate as we are, uh, having been elected to uh, uh, ponder, ponder such things. Um, on balance, uh, well, I won't foreshadow uh, my vote, but I'm, I'm sympathetic and if, thank you for agreeing to just take that variation. Thank you, Councillor Mackie. Uh, Councillor Cruz, did you speak? Really, that was just questions. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, this is much better. Um, our forum is uh, a much better option. So thank you for Councillor Mackey for suggesting that. And that was my problem from the beginning in calling out people's panel. It is very loaded, and you know. Um, but I would like it to be added further with more groups in there, um, as I suggested. suggested. Is yes, this please. well? You can't suggest it. Councillor Cruz has to suggest it. So could I suggest adding, um, as I stated before, a disability groups, Indigenous groups, migrant communities, developers, uh, commercial stakeholders <laughs> and corporations? Yeah, can we, can we just I mean, have that again? Any other <laughs> groups and other Groups. Sorry, can we just let's just have it let's just have it slowly. Who's putting this forward? It looks like councillors, councillors, this forward. councillors. Well, it is, it is Councillor Sims' motion. Mary's the one with the floor. Councillor Kieran. Yeah, I'll share. No, I'll share. I'll share. Councillor Ho will continue when. Councillor Kouros, if you may continue with your suggested variation. Well, I would like to have included, um, uh, we're talking a disability groups, um, Indigenous groups, migrant communities. Developers, community, co uh, commercial corporations. <laughs> uh, that's all that comes to mind. I take taking into account, and why I'm including all that is that just taking that into account that we're covering uh, a broader spectrum of uh, uh, consultation out there to include um, all communities and groups and. To contribute. You haven't forgotten LGBTI um, oh, yeah. groups and also any gender groups as well, Councillor yep. Kuros. Yep, might as well. Yeah. Oh, can we add those as well, please? I'm, I'm, I assume I have to okay and change. I'm just wondering, rather than naming every uh, potential um, yeah, yeah, sector, yeah. we could we could simply say forum including representatives from business uh, from resident business environment um, groups and any other uh, stakeholder groups which would then allow administration to um, work through some of those uh, factors. Uh, well, and technically, all, technically all, council will have to group. suggest in all, that. In all due respect, I think we need to be clear. Okay, oh, well, I'm happy with that. I'm happy to incorporate that. Councillor Martin, are you happy with that? Um, oh, um, yeah, all right. Uh, should we have precinct groups in there as well? Well, that's, that's how you mentioned that group. Yeah, it should be specific. Oh, okay. Yeah. Why not? And then precinct groups. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. Should have the Adelaide Business Collective in there as well. Yeah, might as well. Is that for that part? Commercial corporations? Mm -hmm. okay. No, I'm happy with that. It's a mm. yeah, technically not for profit. Oh. <laughs> oh, we've actually forgotten the sporting and community clubs mm -hmm. as well, council members. Okay. The primary use of the park needs. Oh, of course. Yes. Is that second variation amenable to the uh, mover of the amendment and the seconder of the amendment? Councillor Simpson. Well, yes, I think that's that's okay with me. Are you happy with that? Oh, I'd like the Adelaide Parklands Preservation Association. Oh. Is, is that, well, the suggestion variation? Well, Councillor Kuros, are you going to suggest that as well? A small business. Oh, and sorry, Kylie, we forgot. Um, it's it's business. Business. It's not business. Small business. Councillors, councillors, if you want to put your hand up, we'll do it. I was worried this room was too casual for you. Um, sorry, Kylie, you forgot uh, gender groups after LGBTI. Okay. Cricket teams. Now, do we feel do we feel we've covered the bases there, councillor? Except, I think otherwise it's going to get two councillors. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> oh. So, right. Councillor Sims, you're, you're happy with that suggested variation? Yes, I'm happy. Councillor Martin, are you happy with that suggested variation? I think there are one or two North Adelaide residents we've left out. But, um, I'll otherwise, accept, I'll accept, I'm happy that. with that. I'll accept that, yes. Okay. Splendid. Okay. okay, now, no, is this just a quick question, Councillor Abraham, today? Uh, can we get some uh, feedback and commentary from um, administration to see whether if this is doable? <laughs> uh, the uh, yeah. I think it's fair, fair to say that the consultation process was, was mapped out for council and endorsed by council before we commenced. So it was specifically resolved upon by council and we have complied with that requirement from day one. We've complied with the Local Government Act section 123. So we've done the minimum requirements plus some. Um, I want to be clear though, there is no barrier to doing more. So you are within your rights to ask for more consultation to occur. The, um, the, the resolution as proposed is achievable. Um, is no doubt we can contact those groups. I'm not able to confirm the participation of those groups, but an invite to those groups could be, could be provided and we could convene such a, a, an event prior to the required date. So I just want to be really clear with that. So by, by way of summary, we've complied with the Act. You've endorsed the, the consultation to date, but you are within your rights to increase the requirement. Thank you, CEO. Uh, answer your question, Councillor Abraham, today. Uh, Councillor Keir, another question. Another question. Uh, what is there any estimate of the cost of the bureaucratic churn in attempting to include all of these groups uh, adequately in a people's panel? It's not a people's panel, it's a forum. forum. It's still a cost. Um, there's definitely a resource cost associated um, with doing this. We need to make sure um, that we have the, um, all the various databases. We need to probably do it by email. We need to set up you know, time. My other suggestion would be if you actually want genuine engagement, sometimes it's good to offer an honorarium to actually encourage people. Um, so we mm -hmm. might consider yeah, that. Um, and so yes, this will take up resource costs and obviously um, yeah, you know, sure. other financial costs that at this point aren't budgeted. What would a um, respectable honorarium be, Deputy CEO? Um, in the past, it. when we wanted to um, get engagement at this depth and level, it's usually $50 or $100. So no, 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 councillor, councillor, question. Councillor, let's let's let councillor, councillor Kira is continuing to answer the question. Um, to what extent can you say uh, what we will end up with is representative of the community in general when what would appear to be the course of action were this amendment to be approved uh, would be that we would be contacting. Um, essentially organisations, groups, political organisations and um, um, community groups, we'd be contacting their leaders. Simply what would happen is uh, you would get people who were delegated from the leadership structure of each of these organisations. Um, 
to end up with something that's representative? Are we going to get um, a group of people who are simply uh, at the top of certain structures, and we don't yeah, actually, and, and, we, and we don't actually hear from the people, from the people themselves? What, what's been the experience? What, what, what has been the CEOs? What questions to answer? What has been the experience of how representative? Uh, groups uh, are of the people they actually supposed to represent as opposed to speaking for their own agendas. You can ask. You can take it on notice, Deputy City. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, a challenging question. It's subjective. Yeah. Okay. As of course, I'm, I'm conscious you haven't spoken yet. Um, you only suggested a very anxious room. I think it speaks pretty much for itself. Um, I think, you know, um, I'm, I'm really, <laughs> certainly done. Um, I think, you know, we, I can understand what Councillor Sims is saying in regards to, you know, the consultation in that forum with Zoom. Um, however, we did receive good feedback in comparison to other years um, through directly to Council, which is very interesting that, that, we, that, that we have received engagement in that way. And if, if we can reach out one last time in regards to their thoughts that, all, that you know, were within um, their rights to, uh, for them to come forward by then. But I just wanted, do we get a report on this um, before the 11th of, or after the 11th of August? Do, do on the consultation, who, who actually um, responded from this consultation, from this amendment? Just wondering. Do you provide information in regards to this consultation? No. I think that's the point. Oh, is it? Actually, yeah. 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 So, yes. yeah. I'm just I'm just looking at time frame, sorry, because yeah. you know, I know it's pretty tight. It's yeah. very tight. Yeah. I'm yeah. just wondering no if you had the consultation any close Thursday night. Yeah. Right? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, so okay, so we'll we'll report. I can't necessarily uh, promise that you'll get it um, on the um, Thursday oh, okay. beforehand. Okay. That's right. Yeah, yeah, time 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 time. Time. yeah. All right, no problem. Thank you. Councillor Martin, a question. Is it the administration's understanding that they'd invite elected members to view this and so Can therefore be, be informed by it? Be good. Is that CEO, Deputy CEO? Is that your interpretation of what's before us? Which, uh, my experience in, in undertaking similar forums is that council members do not attend so that there is an actual and an, an uninfluenced uh, discussion occurring at the floor of the meeting. Um, but that can be a directive of council if you wish. Well, I would certainly, uh, from my own perspective, I'd like that when I encourage you. Is the CEO willing to take make that undertaking? Through the chair, I think it needs to be made clear. Yeah, um, chair, may, so may I just say, that, yes, uh, uh, for the sake of clarity, I'm not suggesting participation of elected members. I'm saying yes. viewing. That's quite a difficult. So they will attend but not speak. Correct. <laughs> A well, a gag, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> but the CEO, are you, are you happy to make that undertaking based on what's before us? That's a fair point. It's just just yeah, we could watch on the That's fine. CEO, you have to make that undertaking. That's right. Let's move this off. Yes, the chair. Yes. yes. <laughs> Splendid. You're in. Great. Uh, now, members, there are still a couple that haven't spoken. Councillor Noel, was that a question? Yes. Um, I know this is a bit subjective, but uh, would it be considered that, uh, that people are, would feel comfortable expressing their opinions, uh, knowing that uh, the councillors are, you know, are, you know, are viewing and are able to identify? I mean, we're asking, you know, we're asking people to give their their, their genuine opinions, etc., and they wish they wish them to do that in a in a, in a way that they would feel comfortable that they can say what they wish without necessarily, you know, counselling. So. I don't think I've yet met a, anyone um, with a view on the city who lives, works, plays, visits, studies in the city, um, have the opportunity to share an opinion in front of a council member or staff member and um, not feel that they can't do that. So. Um, 
yeah, I'd be surprised if people attended and felt uncomfortable um, with having council members um, on the Zoom meeting. Members, further contributions or questions? If there aren't, I'll just make some remarks from the chair before I pass to council seats. Um, uh, while well, we've got red, green and blue represented there on the board, um, and we think we've incorporated everyone that we possibly can, uh, I'm incredibly concerned that there are uh, specific groups that we have forgotten um, uh, in amongst this uh, mix. Um, and I think uh, we forget those groups to our detriment. Um, and it's probably not fair on those ones if we're doing this on the fly um, uh, to do that. Um, I do appreciate that the administration ran a very thorough consultation um, uh, over a number of weeks. Um, and that is a consultation that's run year on year. And this year uh, we saw a better result as far as participation and submission to that consultation process. Um, reading the consultation, uh, on face value, um, uh, there's not a huge amount in these groups represented here that I think was commented on. There was a couple of comments on uh, the environment and climate change um, and our response to that. Uh, by and large, uh, most commentary was regarding the coronavirus pandemic. Um, uh, and so while the inclusion of these groups, I think, is, is noble and the aim is noble, um, again, uh, I, I just worry that we're missing the point a little bit. Um, uh, nevertheless, uh, I think uh, having a forum is not necessarily always a bad thing. I'm disappointed that the other forum was very much undersubscribed with only uh, two attendees. I think it was scheduled to go uh, for some time and ended up going for about 15 minutes, um, uh, which is a great shame. Uh, so, uh, I worry that uh, this, this forum may end up in a, a similar fate if people aren't given a time to participate um, uh, and that for some participants they might not uh, realise where this request has come from. Nevertheless, asking a question uh, can't always be a bad thing. Uh, I'll pass to Councillor Sims. Well, thank you, Chair, for your comments um, and thank you, councillors, for your contributions. And I do just want to um, restate my apology to administration for not um, speaking uh, to you, Deputy CEO, before the meeting, or indeed yourself, CEO, it would have been helpful for me to do so. And um, I apologise for being put under the, the blowtorch tonight with questioning. I, um, I put this together sort of last minute, so um, I apologise for that. It was remiss of me not to do that. Um, that said, I think the discussion has been um, useful. Um, and, you know, I, I know some councillors have characterised um, external groups as sort of you know dangerous activist groups i don't accept that characterization of business sa um, and i think that's an unfair no, characterization and um, that was the first organization that i mentioned um, by name in uh, talking about the kind of organizations that would be involved and i think that's an unfair characterization um, to uh, refer to their work in that way um, but i think uh, over the um, you know, the last 12 months, we have confronted significant crises as a global community. Climate change, the first half of this year when we saw the horrendous bushfire crisis, and now, of course, the coronavirus pandemic. And I think to actually have a, a more focused conversation with um, a really very broad range of um, constituent groups, I think would be really worthwhile. Um, I was disappointed that there were only two people that came to the consultation that we had last week. I have been pushing for some time for us to improve our engagement and have a more focused conversation. And so this could well be a, a, a bit of a template that's developed for future um, consultation. And um, I'm really, really keen to hear what these broad range of stakeholders have to say about the budget we put forward, priorities and how we are responding to uh, the coronavirus. I think there's some really interesting information that will come out of this uh, discussion. So I encourage members to support this. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Um, and with that, we put the amendment to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, uh, as it's tied and I'm the presiding member, I will cast my vote in the negative. The amendment will fail. Division. And we will return to the
the uh, substantive. Council of Senators is called a division. Uh, can I ask those members who are um, uh, voting for this to stand in their place until their name is recalled? Councillor Donovan, Councillor Martin, Councillor Moran, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Sims. Thank you. Uh, if we could turn to the substantive. Thank you. Finally, members, before you is the substantive motion have returned to. Um, we do have a record of who's spoken on it. Um, and members, I'll ask for any further contributions on this matter. Councillor Sims, you've already taken to spoken I've to spoken it. on the uh, amendment. You've spoken on the You've spoken on, on oh, okay. the substantive. Well, I'll, on the I'll record my dissatisfaction with the uh, outcome. Certainly. Oh. Members, any further contributions? Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, I think it was a highly unsatisfactory um, consultation. Um, the summary of the views is incorrect. Um, it gives a glowing, almost wonderful uh, impression that the uh, consultation, the budget's fantastic. That's not how I read it at all. People couldn't download the app, they couldn't get in, they were frustrated. Um, so that's why I supported going out further for consultation. I'm terribly disappointed. I mean, I, I really have not got much time for Team Adelaide, but tonight hearing that 80% only, only businesses matter, our residents don't matter at all, um, hearing that climate change and coronavirus. Councillor, are, just which, res, which member said residents don't matter? Residents aren't important. 80% of the rates are paid by um, Aman Abrahams that I said that. They should. I don't think, I don't, I don't think that's, that's quite accurate. Because they pay 80% of the rates. They should pay 80% of the So you're clarifying. So, so, so can I just. Have, sorry. So they should have 80% of the representation. That is really dismissing me. Councillors, councillors, councillor Moran so has, has rectified think, her comment I think and, that's and quoted you correctly. Rule, and I think it totally shows what they thinks of the city council. It's business, business, business. That's all that, that counts for them. And um, I, I think it was just so distressing when one councillor spent about 20 minutes amending the amendment with the clear implication that that's what that council would vote for. And then the, the whip Titans and Team Adelaide votes together no, yet again. It is really disgraceful, absolutely disgraceful. Yeah. Now we've Councillor, your reflections have to be on the substantive. And now mm -hmm. we have a good uh, uh, cabinet in uh, Parliament. I will be taking this to the new local government minister, who I think will give us a fair hearing. Thank you. Councillor Kira. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I feel no, acting like this, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's not jumping again. Um, I feel. Well, look, um, I, I I feel compelled to uh, speak uh, in favour of this motion, uh, and at the same time, uh, um, just at the same time, uh, articulate a nuance here. Um, you can disappointed in the public, in the result of the public consultation, um, just because you didn't vote for the previous amendment does not mean that as a councillor you are necessarily disappointed with the public consultation. There is a problem here and what, what happens is everything is so acutely uh, acutely politicised uh, in this council chamber. But the moment something is put up as an amendment, um, the argument then is uh, slung across the chamber that the only reason it was um, turned away, that people said no to the amendment, is political uh, and therefore they must hate the people of the, the city. This is, this is quite outrageous, to be honest. Uh, extrapolation, extrapolation uh, of uh, good intentions. There were very good reasons as to why the previous amendment failed. They had nothing to do with factionalism, and they had nothing. They had nothing to do. They had nothing to do uh, with necessarily are linking. We with necessarily think the I'm, I'm speaking. I'm speaking to I'm this. Sorry, but I'm are this we speaking to this motion. The, no, we, the we we have had an attack on this motion.
the I'm speaking to a very specific attack that, that, that what we're doing, what we're doing here in accepting this and not accepting the amendment is somehow also accepting that there wasn't um, that's adequate uh, response from the public. There are many reasons that the public may not have responded, but let me remind all councillors that we ourselves, each of us, uh, can undertake a people's panel of our own by speaking to our constituents. That is our job. Uh, each of us has a website. Each of us has a public profile. Each of us is approachable by every single constituent out there. One of the problems that we have out there, as Councillor Abrahimzadeh uh, put so well, is there is political fatigue. Part of the reason for that is all of this acute politicisation that's going on. Good policy uh, gets, gets disrupted and names get slumped. Uh, in the place of good reasoned argument. Uh, so people are fatigued. They've been through an crisis. They expect us to lead. It may well be. They expect us in this instance, in this budget, to do what we're delegated to do, and that is lead and pass a budget, uh, leaving the consultation to them directly as and when we're able to do so. Um, that may be one of the reasons we're not getting people to know. That does not mean that voting for this in the absence of the other is somehow you know, a, a derogation of our, of our duties as, uh, as councillors. Far from it. It's, it's an outrage to say that. Thank you, Councillor Kieran. I know that if the Lord Mayor were here, she'd wish to remind you of merely noting uh, the and we are receiving the submissions, uh, and so I feel compelled to say that as well. Councillor Kouros, you had your hand up? Yes. Uh, thank you, Acting Mayor. Um, so as far as I understand, we've had a really good response in comparison to last year. And I think we can't take away that focus. And, 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 and we did get a very good response in regard to the budget. We didn't get a very good response on the Zoom, which is understandable. Um, but in saying that also, we, are, we also ask our ratepayers to engage and that's what we were wanting from the forum that we already have consulted on. And having a consultation on a consultation is not, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's a very strange thing. So we already have approached our ratepayers and they have consulted with us. I'm not going to talk about the amendment, um, but I'm going to just say that we have a previous amendment. I'll talk to this one in saying that we did receive a good response in comparison to last year. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Uh, members, are there any further speakers? Councillor North. Yes. Thank you, Dion. Um, I think I do wish to also note that that forum we had online uh, through Zoom, uh, also the participants that were there were uh, wanting to hear what we had to say in regards to the budget. So they were expecting information yeah. rather than contributions. And I think we need to think about that when we are looking at this as a, as a, as a means by which to talk to people or talk with people, is that these things need, we need to be delivering them in a, in a way that they can understand, in a way that they can, can uh, absorb what, we're, you know, what is going on. Because it is a, it is a, a, a very, uh, it's a very high level document and it is obviously for someone to be able to drill down into the, uh, the various things and to get, get something out that we can uh, you know, comment to is very difficult. And so, so I think uh, this consultation process, particularly something where you're asking interaction, I think um, we need to be a bit more mindful how we're we going to be able to deliver something that people can talk to and be informed, as I suppose that informed uh, in, a, in a verbal manner rather than by, by uh, uh, in, a, in a written form. And I think if we think about that, then we'll actually enrich the conversation. And I think otherwise, I can't expect more. We have to have a timeline sometime. And again, this doesn't procure, uh, doesn't limit people to talking to us afterwards and enabling us to take good ideas and, and list them and bring them into, into the budget as well. Because the one thing we do need more than anything else is ideas. And at least this is a starting point and let's get it going. Two weeks is certainly not a time that is going to give us anything uh, that meaningful that we can actually influence this document uh, that, will, that will come out of our, our noting. And I think, remember that, that we need a bit of time to actually work our way through it and develop something that we can use. And I think that we can still always do, so it doesn't have an impact on, the, on our rate payers or the, or the electors. Uh, thank you, Councillor Noel. Now, I'm just very conscious um, of time. We must start the committee um, within half an hour of the scheduled time. It was scheduled for six. Um, we may, if you wish, adjourn this meeting, continue on with the topic, 
or adjourn this meeting, start the committee, adjourn the committee, come back to this meeting and continue. Or um, if you're happy, if there are no further contributions on this matter. Okay, with that, I'll go back to the second, to the uh, mover, sorry, to sum up. summed up. Put that to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. With that, uh, that brings us to the end of the meeting. I'll close the meeting. We have three minutes to start our committee meeting before it lapses. Um, now, after that um, effort, I'd almost be willing to teach you less and bring you in here another day, um, seeing as we want to waste each other's time. But uh, with that, I'll count one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, we have a quorum. Uh, as such, I declare this uh, special meeting the committee open. I advise that the meeting is being streamed live to the City of Adelaide website and the recording will be published to the internet. Councillors, if I can get through this, you'll have a chance to speak after. Uh, please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of the meeting and it means that to your presence at the meeting will be collected, used and disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside Australia. The council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and we pay respect to their elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We respect, we acknowledge that they are of continuous with Ghana people living today. And we also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present with us. Apologies and leaves of absence. Uh, I just have uh, the Lord Mayor. Three, discussion forum item, the uh, workshop, on the 2020-21 business plan and budget, and I pass to the deputy CEO. Um, thank you, Chair. So, in the spirit of commitment that we've provided, I think since uh, March, uh, we've had over 15 sessions now um, with council and with audit. We obviously started our budget deliberations with informally back in December. Um, also had a budget session with you in February, um, so I think this is number 16. Um, so what we want to do tonight is just run you through um, quite quickly where the final numbers have landed, um, because next week we'll be providing you um, with a business plan and budget for your consideration um, to adopt the um, financial settings for the year. You can commence. Um, so, that's the timeline. I understand it is tight. We have worked really hard to get that consultation feedback through to you members. Um, there is still opportunity for you to do a deep dive, read those rich insights, talk to the community and connections that you have to bring those ideas through to the chamber next week, um, so that or the week after, so that that um, final document does reflect hopefully um, what you feel um, should be a priority. Um, for this council. Um, we will be taking the draft budget through to audit committee this Friday for their review and input. 
Um, and obviously, um, anything from the audit committee will come through to council as well, so you'll also have their input and feedback. Um, that was just a summary of the consultation, but I think we've done that to that's the we've done that to death, I'll move on. <laughs> um, interestingly, we did ask the community around the financial levers, so we worked together over the last few months to develop those, and we did ask the community and those that responded to um, tell us which ones that they felt were of importance. And the investment in new revenue streams clearly came top, um, and so we all, um, it's, uh, I think we've all, um, reflected on um, the volatility of our revenue over the last few weeks um, with our low um, amount that comes in from rates and our high reliability on on-street and off-street car parking and on our aquatic and other commercial facilities. So there will be a piece of work that will get past that that we'll bring through to you around what new long-term revenue streams could look like. So that has started. Um, and that will need to get fast track. But also some other feedback, there was a level of comfort around borrowings um, and feedback around unfreezing the rate of the dollar. Interesting. Um, so tonight, based on um, what you have looked at in the previous document, which is the community consultation, um, the principles that you've adopted on the 30th of June to support the city and the council in its recovery. Is there anything that you'd like us to take on board tonight for us to consider for next week? Um, those are the recovery principles, you know those by now. Um, obviously, we have um, focused um, in easing the financial pressure on our ratepayers as well as the community. Um, we've also um, focused on creating capacity to respond and the council signed off on revised treasury policy at the end of June. Um, and financial sustainability is going to be really important as well. And we've already started those conversations with you on the 18th of July around <coughs> doing council services. So I'll hand over to Alex now, who will go through um, what we showed you at the end of June and um, what the revised budget is looking like and explain those variances for you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Claire, and uh, through the chair. So I'll just walk you through very briefly uh, the changes. So this slide uh, represents the changes from a funding perspective to the operations budget. The uh, major change we see is around the rates. We've now finalised our valuations from the rating perspective. The increase is actually now about 2.2%. Uh, and that is obviously holding the rate of the dollar frozen for the seventh consecutive year. Uh, but we've got new developments and additions accounting for about 1.3% increase and a valuation uplift of about uh, 0.7%. And just to touch on the reason for that uh, downward revision is uh, we were getting advice as to the treatment of a new development in terms of the rateability of that, uh, and the legal advice we've had is that it's not rateable. Uh, the other significant changes uh, we have reduced down the allocation of the business systems roadmap. We are working through uh, just the reprioritisation and retiming the key elements of that. Uh, and then we've also uh, flowed through the impact of the uh, removal of the reminder notice for the expiations. Uh, that's not a full year impact, that's coming in in October. And also, because of the current situation we have with uh, COVID 19 impact on parking, the size of that for this financial year is anticipated to be lower than what it would have otherwise been. Uh, we also just had some adjustments uh, for the LA Central Market Authority. Uh, they will present their budget to you next week, along with the Rental Management Authority. Uh, they do have an operating deficit at this stage of uh, 813, which has now been revised to 855. Uh, but they can talk to that in further detail next week. Part of the challenges around they're facing is around their car park and revenue, and uh, similar to what we've had. So the net impact of all that is actually a favourable adjustment of $80,000. This slide then just talks to the uh, changes around the projects and the infrastructure. 
There's only one new project coming in, which is the outdoor activation grant. That's fully funded by the state government, so that's zero bottom line. Uh, we've had feedback from uh, our stakeholders in Union Street. Given the current circumstances with COVID, I don't want to see an upgrade of the occurring in the near future because that will have a double impact. So they've asked us to defer the work on that. And then we've also in terms of the program for 2021, we've reviewed the resource allocation and requirements need. Uh, and that's uh, reduced by about $1.35 million. The other thing I'll just uh, highlight there is around the uh, capital request for our Central Market Authority. We had built into the draft budget a request that had come through at $4.45 million. Uh, I'll talk to that in further detail next week. That is still built within the numbers, but we're in the process of working through that with them. The other thing I just want to foreshadow is that we've been working through our utility costs, uh, both water and electricity. Uh, as you know, we've got the new uh, power purchase agreement, which is producing some savings. But, uh, to count that we have had some increase in regulatory costs, uh, what are commonly known as pass-through costs, and uh, with that, with some federal government uh, environmental obligations and increases in metering charges, we are anticipating an increase in that, but we're still working through the quantum of that. Uh, we will be monitoring that uh, in the coming weeks and months, and we'll provide further updates on that. And if required, as we probably will need to, put through an adjustment for the quarter one revised forecast. So um, all up, if you take the 80,000 there and the 2.5 million there, we've got about a 2.6 million favorable position in terms of adjustments made into 2021. But what we do have is coming through, and you'll see this next week when we present the quarter four report, is that we've actually got timing adjustments for projects that have been impacted by COVID and other things uh, of about $1 million that weren't built into the draft budget. All up, they come to about 7.8. We had built some of those into the draft budget, but we've got some further adjustments. So effectively, that uh, increases the requirement for next financial year. But what we, you will see next week is that our operating position uh, for 2019-20 uh, from a funding perspective, is about $12 million favourable to what we've forecasted at quarter three. Uh, some of that's also around uh, favourable income around the uh, e parks and on street parking. And we've also, uh, from the operating surface deficit perspective, about uh, $8.7 million favourable. So this just reflects our total funding requirement. Uh, that has gone up by about $3.4 million, but the majority of that relates to, or actually, that relates to the, the timing adjustment that I just talked about, $6.1 million, which is then offset by the reduction of the infrastructure program and the net uh, reduction of the operations uh, to bring that down to a net increase of 3.4 to 2021. As I just said, there's a reduction for 2019-20. And then this slide just talks to our financial accounting position. Uh, that has, uh, the deficit has increased, but again, for exactly the same reason, is the impact uh, flowing through from those retirement adjustments from 1920. And we also do have some just adjustments in terms of how we've had to account for leases uh, due to the accounting standards. So I'll leave it there, but if there are questions, certainly have to have to Okay. Thank you. Um, look, a couple of questions. First one in relation to Union Street and the postponement of the, uh, the project there. Um, uh, it says and uh, on the screen that uh, there was consultation with several stakeholders. I'm just trying to get a feeling for 
whether that represents all of the stakeholders or perhaps one or two or three or four major ones because um, you would need to you know stop the train at this point in time to have a very strong support for doing so is there that or is it just several stakeholders that it would be a problem Director Clinton. Yep, thank you, through the chair. Um, thanks for the question, Councillor. Um, there's two forms of consultation that we've had in Union Street. So we've been um, through the development design in Union Street. We've been consulting with all of the businesses and ratepayers in the street um, to get to the point of putting forward a project that could be delivered in the budget. Um, we've also, through the budget, received um, significant feedback from those same people. Um, we've had 16 direct responses in writing to the project. 75% of those, or 12 of those, are not supportive of the project. So a fair proportion of the feedback we've received has been that um, the businesses and, and people in the street, uh, the ratepayers, are not supportive of the project because of the um, disruption that that would cause for, for the street. Um, it's not that they don't they don't want the upgrade. They are struggling with the um, issues around the pandemic and COVID nineteen. Their businesses are struggling. Um, we've been listening to their feedback through the development of the design. Um, the feedback that they've given through the IBP process has really confirmed that for us, and they've made a position uh, fairly firm in that they would prefer to see the upgrade done at an alternative time and it would be a project that we would put forward in future years. As, and have we told them that this is going forward as a decision of council for the uh, We have given them some feedback that we would incorporate their feedback into this process, but obviously it would still be a result of a council decision to, uh, to adopt this way of uh, the project. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, if I can go to the, uh, the central market, and, and I do understand we're going to have a presentation from them, but I'm interested in the accounting uh, treatment of it. It, it. It's being said that they're proposing an $850,000 deficit, and I think they've got some problems with their car parking. Is that problem related to the redevelopment of the Central Market Arcade? That is a anticipated fall in income when demolition begins, or is it some other cause? And no, it's uh, primarily a direct impact of uh, COVID-19. Uh, that's the primary driver, but there is all additional increases in operational costs as well. So have they factored in, I think, uh, May 21 is the beginning of the demolition, is that correct? Yep, that's scheduled. So is that factored in to the... Uh, uh, yes, so the, that's there will be an impact on car at the very tail end of the financial year, but that's very minimal in the scheme of things. And just in, again, in terms of the accounting uh, treatment, uh, in addition to the uh, $54 million total cost of the returnable works uh, and the $2 million contingency, uh, are we going to include loss of income for the Central Market Authority and therefore whatever is required to assist them? in their uh, funding, their, their operations, their deficit. Are we going to include that in the cost of the central market arcade redevelopment, or is that just going to be a cost of council? Uh, <clears throat> through the chair. So the investment from the city of Adelaide, I think is the $27.8 million that we've talked about for a while now. Uh, uh, the total cost of the returnable works is for So the total investment from us is $27.8 million or the 6,000 square metres of net level area. No, that's that's not right. Council, I'm not going to have to have you dispute. So the director has to call us up your question. So through the chair, um, back to the, through the chair, what we're working on, so our associate director of the commercial is working closely with the general manager and the new board of the uh, of ACMA to work through where we can leverage the capital investment from ICD. Um, so some of the capital works, for example, 
that have been requested through the board are likely to be able to be picked up through the development. Uh, I'll give you a good example of one. Um, things like uh, the current escalator, uh, which is, you know, at some point he was getting pretty close to useful life. Um, when the development starts, um, as you rightly point out next year, there will be um, base service, basement services as well as level ground level services for both escalators and elevators that will be new and therefore um, the, the requirement to invest in a new escalator right now in the central market probably isn't the best use of capital output power play. Is that a part, by the way, of that um, discussion that's ongoing about the $4.6 million in capital work? Correct. Okay. So I, uh, you're saying to me that there will be savings that will offset that loss of revenues. Is that essentially what you're saying to me? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm yeah. So what I'm saying is we, we'll work through with the developer and ACMA to look at how we can leverage the investment in ICT by ICD to benefit ACMA itself. So, but will we those additional costs, if they are required to be funded by council, will they be added to the fixed fifty-six million dollars for the returnable works, or will they be a separate calculation? within council's operations? Um, through the chair, it's probably hypothetical at this stage, to be honest, I, I just can't answer that question, not knowing what those costs may or may not be. Um, but we'll certainly be looking for support um, for things like car parking solutions in the short term, because there are some obvious places close to that location that we can utilise as uh, potentially as a car park to assist those who are visiting the markets whilst the development is underway. No, I understand that, and look, I, I'm not, wishing to be difficult. I'm just saying in principle, though, we decided, is that a market cost, market redevelopment cost? I, I think perhaps if I, if I could assist councillor and director, um, there is a particular way that deficits, operational deficits of the authority ordered on as it is currently, Mr. Brown, how is that? Could you please illuminate that for us? How is that currently recorded? How does that currently sit on our books? Uh, so uh, through the chair, Effectively, what we need to do is look at each entity in its own right. So the subsidiaries, we look at the impact on their business, and then we will reflect that accordingly. Uh, we can come back to you with the details of the actual potential impact from the car parking perspective that has been modelled, uh, but recognise that that's only when we get to the, the capacity, towards the capacity of the car park that that has an impact. Okay. Um otherwise but thank you anyway members any further questions any questions <laughs> yeah, got it last time. yeah can i just ask about that as well uh, why why given this is you know such a, a a big bit to digest was it distributed at 8 p.m last night instead of three days before the meeting. So the CEO or deputy CEO? Yeah, I'm really happy um, to answer that. We were working through the consultation to quite late on Thursday um, and um, we were modelling the numbers as well. So um, tonight, I was comfortable that tonight is a workshop, it's an opportunity for you to ask questions. Um, I wasn't coming in here to ask you to um, you know, sign off on, on these numbers. This is just to give you an indication. We've committed to trying to be as transparent and to give you as much information as possible regarding our financial uh, situation. So tonight was always scheduled, noting that the consultation was tight, um, but to give you a touch point before we bring through the final document. So apologies, I know it's not ideal, um, but noting that there weren't any other items, it wasn't you know, as if you had a normal committee happening tonight with 15 other documents to read. Um, it's not ideal, but it's due to the circumstances. Thank you, Deputy CEO. Any other queries, members? Councillor Mackin. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I think I know the answer, but just to be satisfied, uh, on page 10 that we're currently on in the operating position commentary, the uh, provision for structural realignment costs of 14.4 million. Is that the estimation for the cost of exiting employees through the savings uh, to identify the 20 million recurrent savings? Uh, through the chair, there's a provision for potential costs in terms of transitioning our services. So, uh, yes, in part, that's 
potentially the costs involved with that. I don't know if there could be other costs as well. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Any further questions, members? No, I just uh, have a couple. Um, I'm just going to take another bite of that. Uh, Akma Cherry, sorry, Ian. Um, yeah, could you just could you just uh, flesh that out a little bit? Because I noticed um, Mr. Brown said still working that through with them, um, uh, and uh, you alluded to it as well. Um, so, do we have a final figure on what is being proposed in the budget as far as capital expense for the authority, or? So what's been proposed by the Acting Board is what, uh, pro proposed by us, the administration. Uh, no, no, so no, we've got a, uh, no, a request from the board, which myself, Clinton and his asset management team, and Tom McCready, our associate director of property and commercial, are just working through because there is an interrelationship there between ICD development. And to be fair to the Acting Board, um, I think they're putting forward some numbers, and we've got some additional information that we now have like full line of sight of with ICD uh, property. Development partner, um, and I'll, I would imagine that number can be value managed down um, in terms of um, the likely capital outlay. So it's a, it's a bit of a work in progress, and you'll between now and obviously next week, there'll be some further insights yeah. to that. What sort of you mentioned the, the escalators and that sort of things? Are there other pieces of infrastructure throughout that perhaps you're seeking to renew alongside the construction of the, the redeveloped arcade? There are probably some, effects, some core things that are required from a capital outlay now. So things like the switch boards, the roofing, I think those things that we've, we've worked through with our asset managers saying you know, they are immediate and required. And then there are a range of other things such as storage, cool rooms, um, those types of enhancements that can probably, um, subject to some discussion with our infrastructure team, um, be provided for, provided through the ICC, ICD development. Understood. Um, and this is more of a financial question about where things sit on it. Um, uh, that capital outlay for the central market, um, uh, would that does that then sit on our books as as debt, as money that, that the subsidiary owes us, or so that essentially that goes onto their balance sheet? Uh, yes, from the perspective of the funding of it, we're funding it uh, from the city of Adelaide through bonds. Yep. Um, cumulative, including 2021, uh, that would be approximately 17, $17 million dollars uh, by the end of 2021. And so we have a, a loan effect. Uh, we do record that there is interest payable on that, uh, but in effect we don't charge interest. And is um that's because the the authority. Uh, Tenant of ours is that in a sense how it works in the central market? It's, it's a subsidiary. It's a subsidiary, but they pay us. They, the, there's, yeah, they they do contribute revenue to our bottom line as well. So the intent is that, or the intent was that the subsidiary would make surplus, and they would fund their asset renewals through that surplus. Uh, but as you appreciate, the last few years has been on a deficit, and for Cumulatively, there's been operating deficit, and as a result, the only way of funding those things is from effectively a loan from the parent, which is us. Understood. Um, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll come yeah. back to you after, Council. Uh, that's that's fine there. Um, a further question is the IT business roadmap. I think I got that name right. What happened there? Why the change? Sorry. Yeah. Um, so we've just retimed some projects, um, if you want to. But why? Yeah. To help um, smooth through um, the reduction in um, income. So we need so, to. I was looking to try and balance um, or reach a balanced position. Um, so the business business system roadmap. Yes. If we can retime projects within that without impacting those currently underway. Yeah. Means it's a longer um, schedule of works. But where which parts of it are being delayed? What what systems are now coming online a year later? What? Yeah. I'm sorry, I realise it's a question yeah, somewhat technical. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, to the Chair. Um, so we're just retiming and reprioritizing the project right now. So there are a couple of projects this year that we will complete, um, which is around. 
on street parking and uh, trans management. Mm -hmm. um, there's some transformational projects which are around our analytics that we do have some ability to read time later on, mm -hmm. which, have, which won't have a significant impact um, to what we're trying to do at this stage um, because of with COVID and the delays, mm -hmm. which is access to every time. Yeah. So it's, it's only analytics capability that we are. And, and, and there's analytics and there's also so, uh, around our relationship management as well, but as I said, we can read time like that. What, 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 what about relationship management? What was the proposed introduction? So, uh, so this year we had um, an assessment phase around yeah, and understanding our detailed requirements around how we are managing our stakeholders and their interactions. Uh, we'll still keep, we'll still start that uh, this year, um, and then that will then inform what the future projects will look like, which just means that we'll spread a bit of that over this financial year and the next. You're not delivering it this financial year. If we won't deliver this year. We'll actually assess, gather requirements, go to market, yeah. and then. Actually but you're currently intending on delivering it this. this Correct. Year. Oh, we'll start to start that work. Yes. Um, stakeholder management is that like? Give me an example of a stakeholder. Does that? Someone who's put a development application. Yeah, absolutely. Is that someone who's called the customer center? Is that... of, yeah, absolutely. So all right, which could range from uh, customers, ratepayers, um, business organizations, yeah. students, and those that participating that in a people's. Yeah, yeah, but a lot of that list that was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Understood. Thank you. Thank you, um, Sanjoy. Um, and uh, further question about how. Um, are these changes and also the administration, how they interpret uh, the motion about the $20 million in savings. Um, now, the $20 million in savings, now that is to be, in my view, and correct me if I'm wrong, that is to be achieved um, uh, coming from the operational budget, which we approve at the 11th of August meeting. None, none of the tinkering and what have you that we're doing now is, you know, we're not shaving that off the top of the savings or, or whatever else. Is that is that correct? Am I from the operations budget line? Yes. Yep. As it's as it's approved on the eleventh of August. Correct. You will never know. Okay. Splendid. All right. No, that's good. I'll, I'll just make a couple of quick comments before I, uh, I throw it over to Councillor Martin. Um, what are you doing? Uh, I'm just going to leave that sleeping okay. dog to my. Thank you, Mary. Um, rude. Um, just a couple of comments. Um, uh, I really, really think we should be pushing on with um, uh, the IT business roadmap. Sorry, what is it called again? Is that what it's called again? Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, business systems or whatever. Uh, well, I think we should be pushing on with that as planned. Um, uh, I think it is. I think it is um, uh, really bad that use dozens and dozens of different systems in our organization and it's a it's a symptom of of problems perhaps historic problems which were never addressed um, uh, i think if we are to achieve 20 million dollars in operational savings um, uh, and if we are to do that while ensuring we do not compromise frontline services customer management and stakeholder management is key um, uh, to absolutely everything we do. Hundreds of thousands of interactions through the customer centre every year, um, uh, and we're not doing an up-to-date CRM to deal with all those inquiries, all those calls. Um, we need a CRM that stretches across the entirety of our organisation, um, because too often, as a city, we put process above people. It's time that we put people first and ahead of process. And in order to put people first, you must be able to manage them, their information and their interactions with the city very, very well. And you can't do that if you don't have up-to-date IT systems. Um, I was shocked when I was sitting in on an audit committee, I think Councillor Martin was there as well, uh, to learn for the time that we never had one. Or what we have is a, is a mishmash and a, and a patchwork of all various systems. Uh, I think it's awful. I think it's terrible that our staff have to do with outdated systems, that they are then are not using the technology available and then must have to do with people who have slipped through the gaps at some point in time, people who get angry, people who get angry and then call their counsellors, who then get angry at staff as well, because people are not being put first. So CRM, incredibly, incredibly important. I think that needs to be brought back into the budget. Um, I can't foreshadow amendments because it's a committee, um, uh, but I'll leave you all to read between the lines. Um, uh, and with that, I'll pass to Councillor Martin, who I think had a couple of questions. Yeah, look, I, I did have a couple of questions. Um, and, uh, 
I'm just reflecting on the content of what you were saying, but um, do I understand then that that IT expenditure that's recommended is being cut substantially and, and what is the cut compared to the recommended expenditure? Um, so we were recommending through the chair three million um, and reducing that by one million, so down to two million. One third. Yeah. Okay. And did I understand from the earlier conversation that um, the uh, the cumulative debt from the central market is seventeen million dollars? Is that is that what's sitting on it? That's correct. Wow. Okay. It's more than a couple of years, isn't it? Yeah, I know, but that's a uh, that's the first time I've heard that figure. That's the first time I've heard that figure. Okay. Um, look, a couple of things that I would like to just observe, uh, uh, and the first is that I disagree profoundly about the computer system. Um, in the real world, people manage with computer systems that they have, and they patch them up, and they get by as best they can. In the world of government. Um, it's a different matter, and it's always um, a, a search to find the Rolls-Royce system. Um, it doesn't work that way in the real world. Uh, and let me tell you, I'm associated with organisations who patch and patch and patch, and one day hope to find a real solution. Uh, the juggling act for the council is to um, work out whether it's worth placing a whole heap of other people-focused matters um, before this this particular expenditure item, uh, and I don't think that um, you know that that expenditure at three million dollars was what warranted um, you know not convinced the two million is either. Um, I, I I would say, however, I'm sorry, I missed that France. I sometimes miss things from France. Yeah. Yeah, it's best to do it. Let's, yes, let's continue. Now, we almost made it. Let me just say, we almost made it. Then I had to open my mouth. The uh, the extraordinary thing about that consultation, which I think could have been a lot better. I mean, frankly, could have been a lot better. But the extraordinary thing about it is that there were three areas that repeatedly came up from those who participated, and the three things were core projects like footpaths. Uh, renewals of footpaths, upgrades, maintenance of footpaths, um, bikeways, um, and uh, they also, um, uh, the respondents talked about small business, and there was quite a poignant plea, and I don't know whether anyone else saw it, to the CEO and the councillors to realise that there are small businesses, large numbers of them, that will disappear from the city in the next 12 months, unless you do something about rate reduction. And the extraordinary thing in this document here, which has been shaped by, um, uh, not me, because I've certainly not had uh, the numbers to be able to do so, is that the budget doesn't address any of the major issues that the public consultation proposes. Um, you know, the team has voted down the prospect of a rate reduction for small business, or all rate payers, in fact. Uh, and that is something that people are looking for. They're looking for financial assistance. Um, there are repeated references to um, bikeways uh, and, and the observation that Team Adelaide has been an absolute disaster for active transport in the city of Adelaide, repeatedly through the report. Um, people are saying, pages 27 and 30. Um, so um, it's a good idea, I think, to read these documents because you've then got a better understanding However, having said, oh, Councillor Kouros, Councillor Kouros, I was going to say at least I've got five minutes and it's gone. Let's not <laughs> done so well. Let's not degenerate into a into a bad time so, now. So, um, and, and I, I have no idea because some of these. Uh, uh, comments come from outside of the city because of the your say website you can never be sure but nevertheless the councillors come from outside <laughs> <of> the city <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry yeah, it's you, Mary. so there, there is no no 
uh, accommodation for bike ways, even though the consultation says there should be. And we're still, there is $5 million in state government money sitting there, which we are not accessing because we're not prepared to put in dollar for dollar funding to complete the East West Bikeway. And um, the other thing, uh, which is um, painfully absent in my view, is um, attention to um, infrastructure, capital works, including maintenance of public works. The total budget, as we heard at the last council meeting, is $11 million. Um, and I'd like to just finish this. I'll certainly finish that, which is a fraction of what it was previously um, and barely enough, barely enough. And in the case of North Adelaide, um, the disservices that have been done to that suburb by spending just 12%, 12 percent of the capital works on including renewals of footpaths and the like um, when it occupies um, about 40 percent of the city it has 40 percent of the population 20,000 uh, businesses and workers in the area 12 percent is all we can find to look after the footpaths uh, in fact the Pinnacle of the Probably allocation. with the Grammy Council, I'm waiting to put into full stop. But if you don't mind it up in a few seconds after the <laughs> pinnacle of, of the conversation about that is that we found six thousand dollars to have a look at the stormwater on the corner of Kingston Terrace, which I, I commend. We should be looking at many corners uh, and many stormwaters, but uh, that in itself is not enough. Uh, so you know, I, I'm disappointed. Of Good. Oh, thank you, Councillor, for that contribution. Members, were there any other comments or questions before we finish up? Oh, certainly. Was that Councillor Ranger? Put your hand. No. Oh, I heard. You were hanging up there. Uh, CEO. Yeah, just some some concluding comments, if I can, just to clarify. Just want to pick up on transparency and something that um, Claire and the team have been working really hard on. And comments like you will never know is wrong. It's, it's something I need to contest. Um, the team have been re working really hard to, like never before, clarify, provide every piece of information we can find. And I'm very proud of the team for doing that. So I must say that is disappointing. Further, I've got to say that I think some really good progress has been made with the budget this year. We've been working really hard in a difficult environment to improve our financial position. And that's taken a lot of work for the team to do in very difficult times. So I'm very pleased with the work they've done. And there's no doubt though that we've got a lot of work to go, not only this year, but in future years. So it's not going to be easy. Um, I think that uh, the budget review process is just four times in the coming year. Uh, quarterly reviews provides opportunity for you to further consider any changes that might occur. And just to remind you that um, the intent from here is for staff to be available to you to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, the special committee on the Wednesday the 5th of August is an opportunity for you to further interrogate, followed by the special council meeting on the 13th um, is also the time for you to adopt. So I just want to remind you that all staff to answer any questions you may have between now and then. Thank you, Mark. Fantastic. All right, members, uh, with that, I will close the meeting. Thank you.